Chapter number two in Kotler's book is uh, about marketing strategy. Um, in this chapter, Kotler talks about what exactly a company and marketing strategy is, um, in brief detail, of course, and how to build a customer relationship. So I've taken out some of the topics from this particular chapter because I feel that as a marketing student at this stage of principles of marketing, uh, you do not need those topics to be known. So I'll go step by step and uh, we will talk about the topics which are easy to understand and those topics have significant contribution towards your knowledge of marketing and how to implement that. So the first topic is strategic planning. Uh, when I ask this thing uh, about strategic planning, what exactly is the first thing that comes into your mind? Now most of the students who are taking this course, doesn't matter wherever you are in the world, you have taken a course uh, on introduction to business. Uh, in that particular course, you have studied about strategic planning. You have studied how a business has been set up. Uh, that particular course talked about goals and objectives and capabilities of an organization. Uh, so strategic planning in terms of marketing uh, is the process of developing and maintaining a strategic fit between the organization goals and capabilities and its changing marketing opportunities. Now, if you move forward a bit, this is actually a very good overview of strategic planning. The, these are the steps in the strategic planning. Like I said before, I've taken some of the topics out because I feel as a marketing student, you do not need those topics at the moment. So how to define a company's mission, how to set the objective and goals, how to design a business portfolio. I feel these are not important at the moment because these are corporate level um, things which uh, people sitting at the top, CEOs, chief marketing officers, and uh, managers, they decide these three things. Now, as an operational marketeer, you will be focused on this particular step, which is actually a product and marketing level or a market level step in which you plan marketing and functional strategies, and then you implement that. So we will be focusing primarily on this particular step, and I will be skimming through these three different points. Uh, very quickly, uh, you have to align business objectives with marketing objectives. For example, if we have a look at the first point here, so your business objective is to build profitable customer relationships. You have to invest in research and you have to improve profits. So your business decides that uh, we have to focus on these three things in our business. So as a marketer or a marketing department, what will be your objectives? You will focus on increasing market share. What exactly is a market share? Uh, think about it. A market share is a uh, share within a market of a particular company. So if it's a mobile phone um, uh, market, uh, how much share Samsung has, how much share Huawei has, how much share Apple has. Uh, every country has a different market share. So an, as an organization, um, they have a look on different markets and then they decide that how much market share do we have so for example Apple might have more market share in the US market as compared to an Indian market but Samsung probably has more share in Indian market um, as compared to US market or vice versa so as a marketing objective the first thing is that you have to focus on market share and in turn when you focus on that that will also affect the profits of an organization you create local partnerships um, and you increase promotion of a particular product. So when you create local partnerships, you're basically creating customer relationships in return. Uh, partnerships can be with the customers, they can be with um, suppliers. And uh, the third thing is increased promotion. So of course you increase the visibility of the market offerings which you're offering to a particular market. Now the business portfolio, uh, which was given in the first slide also, is actually a collection of businesses and products that make up a company. So you have a business, for example, uh, there's a company named Caterpillar, or CAT uh, for that matter of fact. Now Caterpillar has a business portfolio of heavy machinery. They also make clothing items. They also make shoes. Um, they also make watches. They also make um, different other type of products and that all of that makes up, all of those products make up their business portfolio. So as a business, you're not only focused on one product, you're focused on different products. Uh, sometimes those products have different brand names also, just like PepsiCo. Uh, now PepsiCo has different um, products under their domain and those products have different brand names because they have acquired those companies 
for the period of times and those companies are offering different products. Portfolio analysis, um, on the other hand, is basically a major activity in strategic planning where management evaluates the products and businesses that make up the company. So it's basically an analysis of what exactly the, um, the, the company is made up of, their different products. So for example, if I have an organization and I have three or four different um, products, uh, just like Facebook, they own WhatsApp, they own Instagram, and they own multiple other companies. Microsoft also do the same thing. Um, at times when there, there are, um, a, there's a product or service which is not performing as good as the other product, uh, it starts chewing up the money. So when company is spending more money on a certain product in their portfolio, but it's not returning profits, that's the time when the organization decides to drop that particular product from their portfolio. And product or portfolio analysis uh, happens sometimes quarterly, sometimes um, annually, and sometimes even after six months in order to gauge how good a product is uh, performing within an organization. Now, this is a very important term, and I'm pretty sure that most of uh, business school students are um, aware of this particular term, strategic business unit. Now, it is a unit within an organization, or it's a unit of the company, that has a separate mission and objectives that can be planned separately from other company businesses. Uh, it can be a company, some other division, just like engineering division or an IT division. It can be a product line within a division. Uh, so, for example, there are, uh, there's a company, PepsiCo has a product line of um, chips, which we eat. Uh, and they have different brands um, in that division. So there's a division with that produce chips, and within that division, they've got different products. So that's actually called a product line. So they've got Lay's, and they've got different brands that com come into that particular division. Or it can be a single product or a brand. So PepsiCo is also selling Pepsi. They're also selling um, Fanta. They're also selling um, Sprite or 7-Up. Um, so they, it can be a single product or it can be a single brand. Now, if they're selling Fanta, uh, Fanta can have different uh, mission and objectives as compared to Pepsi. So Pepsi can focus on developing uh, and increasing market share and earning more money, whereas Fanta can be focused on increasing the promotion of that particular organization because it's more colorful as compared to uh, Pepsi. So SBU is basically within an organization uh, a different entity, and that actually performs um, within a certain framework, of course, um, but that can have their different mission and objectives and that can perform separately as compared to the overall business. Now, um, when you analyze a current business portfolio, you identify key businesses, of course. First of all, you identify SPUs that make up the company. Uh, you have six or seven different companies that make up Facebook. You assess the attractiveness of uh, various SBUs. So Instagram is more popular than Facebook, maybe. Uh, maybe TikTok is more popular than Instagram. So you assess the attractiveness of, diff, um, of its various SBUs. And then you decide how much support each SBU deserves. So if TikTok is uh, more deserving than Instagram, you spend more money on TikTok because you feel that that particular SBU or strategic business unit can return more money as compared to um, that the other SBU. Uh, if Instagram uh, is more capable, it's more deserving, then you spend more money on Instagram and uh, you spend less money on Facebook. And now sometime it happens, which is a very important point for you to understand, that sometime it happens that um, a, a SBU is not performing well, but the company is still spending money on that particular business unit because they feel that the time um, will come in the future when that SPU is going to perform well. Uh, for example, for BlackBerry, they were spending, uh, they have got different SPUs, of course, but they were spending money on their mobile phones, even though uh, we feel that BlackBerry time is over, but they still felt that they have to spend money on um, their mobile phone division. Uh, that did not work out that well for them. Now, product or market expansion grid is a very important tool for marketeers. What exactly uh, this tool does, it identifies companies' growth opportunities uh, through four different things, through market penetration, market development, 
product development or diversification so as a marketeer or as a marketing student these are the four things which you have to know this is a very important topic these fall under product expansion grid and they are uh, market penetration market development product development and or or diversification so if you look look at it on the left hand side of the grid there is an existing market and then there are new markets and on the top there is an existing product and then there are new products so within an existing market you've got an existing product and you're going and launching your product so what strategy are you going to use you're going to use a market penetration strategy and i will talk about it what exactly these strategies are you've got an existing product within a market but you are launching that product in a new market so which strategy are you going to use you're going to use a market development strategy for example you've got a mobile phone uh, in a u.s market and you're going to launch it in a new market market for example fiji or new zealand your brand does not exist in new zealand uh, but it does exist in the u.s so you're going to launch that mobile phone in new zealand which is a new market for you so you will be using market development strategy in that case now your product is new and you're launching it in existing market so market already exists so your strategy will be product development and if your product is new and it's a new market then you will be using a diversification strategy so what exactly these strategy are uh, let's have a look so market penetration is a growth strategy so you have to focus on this word it's a growth strategy increasing sales to current market segments without changing the product so let me go back on the slide again so you're not changing the product you're not changing the market it's an existing market but your focus is um sorry your focus is on the sales to the current segment without changing the product so you need to increase the sales within the current market with already existing product you're not making any changes to that the market development on the other hand is a growth strategy that identifies and develops new market segments for current products you already have a product like i said but this strategy is identifying new markets for your product so you take this product and you move to a new market uh, or market segments of course uh, for example on the right hand side you have an example of crocs now crocs they were uh, it's a shoe brand of course they were making shoes casual shoes for men in the beginning then they explored new market uh, they went into women, they went into kids, and they started making apparel. I think they're not making apparel anymore, probably in most of the markets. They're sticking to shoes because apparel did not work good. Uh, and also entertainment. That's very strange because I did not know that Crocs, they are also focusing on the entertainment side of it. So that's actually a market development strategy. Product development, on the other hand, is a growth strategy that offers a new or modified products to existing market segments so marketing market already exists you have a new product or a modified product uh, and you're offering that product to that particular market uh, again going back to the mobile phone example the market already exists you are coming up with a different camera you are coming up with a different screen and you're offering that product to that particular market and that is called a product development strategy and diversification in the end is a growth strategy through starting up or acquiring businesses outside the company's current products and markets so it's a new product new market and you spend money on it and you feel that product is going to be a hit in the market in a new market and you start launching that product so it's mainly a starting up a new sbu within an organization so let me have uh, let me ask you a question over here that all of the following are components of the product market expansion grid except so it's got market penetration is it one of uh, the component of market expansion grid is it market development unification or product development and the answer is unification that is not part of a market expansion grid now moving forward uh, of course we have to build customer relationship and that is why we are doing all of this marketing and strategy and we are, we are studying all of that so that can happen uh, through different methods you can have databases you can develop uh, partnership programs you can develop different ways of loyalty cards but one of the thing which i really like is a value delivery network now what exactly is a value delivery network 
It is made up of the company, suppliers, distributors, and customers who partner with each other to improve performance of the entire system. So for example, <clears throat> you want to rent a car. You're going on vacation, you want to rent a car. Uh, you First of all, you bought a ticket, an uh, airline ticket, and when you bought a ticket, you have seen that under that ticket, they're offering you that if you want to rent a car, this is a company which can rent a car to you, and this is, these are their prices. So you rent a car from that website. And the moment you rent a car, suddenly another window pops up and they say that uh, we are offering uh, accommodation at a very cheaper rate. Do you want an, um, an accommodation in that particular place where you are going or you're flying to? And then what you do, you basically go ahead and you book your accommodation or your hotel from that particular website also. Uh, same thing goes for the car manufacturers. You're buying a car and suddenly a window pops up. They say that we will give you six months free um, a service in your or to your car and that's actually one of the supplier or distributors of that particular company of Toyota for example on the left hand side they are giving example of Toyota um, and all of those people they make up a value delivery network in which a customer has been retained uh, where suppliers are coming in and they are giving you for in terms of car example they are giving you parts at a cheaper rates uh, distributors are coming in and sometimes customers they also come in so for example, in case of Apple, uh, they have their customers forum in which customers come, they, um, they write blogs, they write different forums, uh, and they help other customers when they are having, or they're having issues with their product or they're having problems with their product. So when you make an integrated marketing mix or integrated marketing plan, what exactly are the things which are important? Of course, you target customers. That's one of the most important thing. And you have a positioning statement. Uh, we have talked about both of these things before, but I will talk about these things in detail in chapter number seven. Um, you talk about the product, the four Ps. Uh, you talk about its variety, quality, design, features, brand name, packaging, service, all of the considerations when it comes to the product. You talk about the price of that particular product. You, there's a list price, you give discounts, there are allowances, payment period, credit terms, all of these things you decide in the pricing strategy of that particular product. Then there is promotion. You talk about advertising, you talk about personal selling, sales, public relation. Uh, then there's this digital marketing, social media marketing, uh, website marketing, email marketing. You talk about all those things um, within a promotion strategy. And then there, there's a place segment in which you develop and decide the channels, uh, the location of the product, how that product is going to be logistically available on different places. When you're managing the marketing efforts within your organization, what exactly do you do? You first of all, you do the analysis. That analysis leads you to planning. And that planning is of course, first of all, you develop a strategic plan. That plan leads to marketing plan. So this will not be your work, at least for a while now, but this is going to be your work. So you develop a marketing plan and I'll tell you what will be the component of marketing plan on my next slide. Once you have a plan, you implement, you operationalize that plan. You carry out the plan. Uh, you say that I'm going to have an influencer from TikTok in order to advertise my product. So that is the implementation. Uh, you, you say that in the marketing plan, but you carry the, out that plan in the implementation phase. And once that has been implemented, you control it by measuring results, by evaluating results, and by taking corrective actions. So you have seen that by having that influencer from TikTok has a positive effect, you evaluate that results. And if it has a positive effect, that's good. If it does not, then you take corrective actions and you move on your plan B, which you have given in your marketing plan already. So within a marketing plan, uh, just before I give you the uh, overall contents of a marketing plan, there's a concept called SWOT analysis. Yes, S-W-O-T. SWOT analysis. So as a marketing student, this is one of the most commonly used tool and that tool is very important for you to understand. Now SWOT analysis is a very simple thing. Internally, you find out what are the strengths of your organization and what are the weakness of your organization. So weakness, of course, is a negative thing. Strengths are a positive thing. 
So if you have a look here, it says internal capabilities that may help a company to reach its objectives and weaknesses are internal limitations. Now, externally, you look at opportunities, which is actually positive, and you look at the threats. So SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Threats are basically current and emerging external factors that may challenge a company's performance. So if it's, uh, there's a politically unstable country where you're operating, that is actually called a threat. Uh, whereas opportunity is that that country has uh, majorly uh, a young population and your product is also focused on, on young population, that is called a, an opportunity and that's a positive thing. So whenever you're making a marketing plan, you always have to make and do a SWOT analysis of your product, of your company, and that will help you in making a better marketing plan. So these are the components or parts of different mar of a marketing plan. First of all, you write a summary. Uh, you find out a marketing situation uh, within a current market. Uh, you find out threats and opportunities. Like I said, I, I would actually extend it and I would say it's a SWOT analysis you have to do at this particular stage. Then there are objectives. The marketing objectives, what exactly do you want to achieve? And you find out the issues uh, which you can face uh, by having uh, or carrying out those objectives and then you develop a marketing strategy which is actually a marketing mix of four p's product place pricing promotion uh, then there's an action plan uh, just like i gave you the example of influencer marketing uh, marketing here from uh, TikTok. Uh, you actually give an action plan that on wednesday i will post this particular thing on facebook on tuesday there's going to be a um, a tv advertisement and uh, for one week we are going to have a billboard advertisement in this particular place so you give the action plan in this particular um, part of your marketing plan you decide budget which is one of the most important thing for higher ups and then in the end you have control mechanism in which you evaluate results and you take corrective actions you have a plan b in this particular step so a question uh, before we move forward and end the chapter which of the following is not one of the four areas of SWOT analysis? Strengths, outsourcing, weakness, and threats. What do you think, what is the answer? It is outsourcing. SWOT is made up of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So outsourcing is not part of SWOT analysis. So if we go and have a look, we start from inside. Uh, you are talking about customer value and relationship. That's what your target is. How do you do it? You set a positioning strategy. We will study that in chapter seven. You set a differentiation strategy. You set targeting strategy and you set segmentation. So you do these four things and you do it uh, in order to develop a value and relationship. Now these four things are then implemented through a product, place, promotion and pricing strategy. Uh, which you spoke about in marketing planning and that's where the marketing planning implementation control and analysis comes in so these all are parts of a marketing plan and what is the target of doing all this that is to um, give value to a customer and you develop a relationship with the customer now on the outer side you have marketing intermediaries uh, suppliers of course distributors who are affecting your exercise here you've got competitors apple has samsung that is continue, uh, continually pushing its boundaries. You've got public and you've got suppliers again here. So you have a marketing plan over here to develop the customer value and these four external factors are affecting whatever you are planning. And uh, we'll study this in detail later on, but this is an overview of a marketing strategy and marketing mix.